Okay, I think this is it. Hi, I'm 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 Andrew Cox with Interpersonal Frequency, and um, my my session is on migrating website content without using a uh, database or content export. Uh, so a little bit about me, I am a back-end web developer. I've been working on uh, mostly Drupal-related projects uh, for over 15 years. Um, I actually checked my Drupal org account. I actually didn't realize I had signed up for it 17 years ago. Um, short of a slight, uh, small stint as a .NET developer, um, as well as working for a newspaper, I've pretty much worked on Drupal off and on since 4.6. Um, and for about half of the time I've worked on Drupal, um, believe it or not, a large portion of the work has been Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, 9, and now 10 migrations. Um, I've worked on websites uh, for federal clients uh, for over five years, and more recently, um, with IF, uh, state and municipal government websites across the United States for the past year and a half. Um, at any point, um, my I, I think I'm go, I go around a half an hour. If you want to stop me or you know I'm going off on a tangent or you want to go on another tangent, please. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite adaptable. So um, with that, how would you get copy um, of, a, of a content of a website onto another website if you don't have um, access to the database or a content export, and it would be a website scraper. Um, so you can see below is um, what ChatGPT told me a website scraper is. Um, and the short of it is there are several different uh, methods to get uh, information from a website, from basic PHP, um, as well as functionality that's built into Drupal, as well as um, what Drupal is built on top of Symfony. Um, there's lots of libraries and methods, and I think I go over at least three or four different ways through different examples in this presentation. So, um, I'll start before I talk about legitimate uses. Uh, there's a lot of bad things you can do with website scrapers. So a couple of examples, uh, a few years ago, a restaurant in my hometown, that was a Chinese restaurant, um, I was um, Googling to find their phone number and I noticed a really good coupon came up and it was like 50% off a delivery order. It was outrageous. I'm like, this is, this is amazing, I'm gonna use it. And I called the number, tried to use the coupon. I found out that it was actually a fake website and the person uh, who owned the restaurant knew all about it. And so this company went and they scraped and they copied their website. They spoofed Google so they would be the first result and they had fake coupons and they were telling them to have them design the website and they would take the coupons down. Um, I had another um, <laughs> freelance, yeah, it's a real story. I had another freelance client a few years ago. It was a, um, a website I did for a HR staffing agency and I built the website, they were happy with it. A Couple years later, she, um, the owner of the company emailed me and she told me that there was a copy of their website on a whole other domain. I looked. It was a pixel for pixel copy of their website with the exception of a different email address and a different phone number. It was um, some outfit in Eastern Europe copied their website verbatim, modified it a little bit, and made it their own website. So there's really bad illegitimate uses for website scrapers, but there's tons of legitimate uses and it's used all the time. So every time you do usability, accessibility, acceptance testing, you're using a website scraper. Uptime monitoring, so when you um, use 24 by seven, that is essentially a robot hitting your website, seeing if it's on or not. SEO and broken link scanning tools, so um, for instance, Screaming Frog, when you're doing a broken link checker, that is a bot. Uh, vulnerability scanning, like OWASP Zap. Web indexes, so that can be Google and Bing. That can be archive.org. Um, OpenAI, which everyone's talking about. Um, not to oversimplify, I think OpenAI is amazing, but it is essentially a really complex search engine. Um, Amazon, Apple, and more, and the social media previews, same principle, they are also um, website scrapers, so that image and description is Facebook or the site formerly known as Twitter going out, grabbing that information, and then displaying it as a preview. So, uh, there's, uh, website scraping is, it's, it's kind of weird when I talk about it, because sometimes you may think, oh, should we really scrape a website? Well, if you're working with a client and they know, you're, they know what you're doing and you're respecting the robots.txt file, which we probably all know about at this point, um, there's really not a, a huge issue with it unless you know it's copyrighted material and you don't you don't want to obviously get that. So, web scraping is actually core Drupal functionality. Um, the Guzzle library has been included since Drupal 8. It replaced the Drupal HTTP request function um, and it's used in several contrib projects. Um, I talk about the Guzzle library a little bit. I don't actually use any examples I uh, show later in the presentation, but I am saying it because a lot of other contrib modules use it um, when they're talking to um, 
external website APIs. Um, so Guzzle, Guzzle can be used to connect to APIs, but since it's also a PHP HTTP client library, it can also be used for the foundation of a web scraping tool if you choose to use it to do that. Um, so that being said, here's a, just an example call using Guzzle, and this is built into Drupal core. Um, you can see the first four lines, I'm essentially, I'm constructing the URL. So you can see um, at the top, I'm grabbing, this is a, uh, this is a service used by libraries to post events. So I'm grabbing the number, I'm, I'm, sending, I'm, I'm sending a request for, here's the website where the events are at. Here is, I wanna do the last X number of days. So you can see 86,400 is the number of seconds in a day. So um, the, the second to last line, I'm doing a request. Basically just, all I have to do is uh, send Guzzle a request. We get that URL. Then it's going to send me contents. It, in this case, it's a JSON array. I use JSON decode. I now have an event uh, data, um, which is which is an array of different event data. And then this particular piece of code is from a cron job. And then I go through and um, I update the events accordingly. So, use cases. Why would I need to do something like this? Well, the original website is hosted by a different vendor. So, um, operating operating under a tight deadline, you're anticipating high traffic. So. One use case where I actually needed to legitimately scrape a website for a client, and they were happy I did it, was um, a couple of government shutdowns ago, there was a piece of pending legislation that was going to hit one of our client's websites. And they had a Drupal 7 website that was in the process of being migrated and had issues with occasionally um, getting taken offline. They knew under a high load it would be potentially taken offline. So they wanted a backup in case their website went offline, in which case to, um, fall back in case in case in, in case that happened. So what I what I did was is I created a scraper where I took the entirety of the website, I scraped it into flat HTML files, flat CSS and JS files. It was then able to be copied onto an S3 bucket and then we were able to host that in a very stable environment without relying on a database, without relying on a Drupal instance. And um, they were happy with it. Never had to use it fortunately, but had their website gone down, we would just be able to flip the switch. And for the most part, no one would have known their website was down. It would just be generated off of flat files that were updated every hour um, through just a, a small process in AWS. Um, another time would be the vendor is unable to give prompt access to the current website. So if you um, want to get started on looking at content and pages and you don't have access to the database or are logging to the Drupal website yet, um, a, a scraper could potentially kickstart you a little bit and um, to start stubbing out content pages. Um, or there's a technical or non-technical limitation with the current website. Um, so if you want to do a proof of concept um, before you officially have access to the website. And that leads into the CMS has very disorganized or problematic content. So um, it could not be structured or coded well. So I know um, for, for example, um, several different content types. You may have 30 to 40 different content types that are all very similar with the exception of maybe two or three fields. So um, you'd have to write like 30 or 40 different migrations for essentially the same content where one or, one or two fields are different. Heavy use of field collections. Um, I apologize for anyone that likes the layout builder module, but heavy use of the layout builder module. Um, there also could be static content that is in modular theme files. So I've seen websites that have been out for 10 or 15 years that have been handled by developers of varying different um, skill sets and all of that content is very difficult um, to really address in migrate API. Um, and sometimes a scraper is just a quick and dirty, easy way of doing it. Um, use of embedded PHP or JavaScript code in rich text fields. So I actually, there's a recent project I just finished up with a couple of weeks ago and the client had embedded PHP and not just using the PHP filter, I believe there were three or four different methods there that PHP code is being embedded in rich text fields. And the views data export module actually crashed repeatedly until I discovered that there was a random PHP code being executed. So I actually could have saved myself time had I just done a scrape of those pages using just a DOM crawler and going through all the pages. So, so there, there are ways in which sometimes a scraper may save you time. And I like to use the Migrate API when it's able to be used, but it, I always like to have a different tool in my toolkit. So, um, and then getting back to it, migration may not be part of the scope of work and you need a basis to rebuild content or quick stub out content. So again, it's useful there. So there's other scenarios where it may make sense to utilize crawling the existing site as an additional um, tool. One would be cleaning extraneous tabs from inline styles, rich text content. I, I don't think Microsoft Word does this anymore, but 
Um, a lot of content, I'm still seeing it from time to time, um, extraneous span tags, uh, inline styles, uh, transforming tags to get layout elements out of HTML copy. So specifically, I've seen sometimes where content editors, let's say there's an image that's always in the upper right hand corner, and I've seen it, I've edited Drupal 7 sites like this where the, the rich text field has divs in it where there's always an image in the corner. There's um, a block of links that should almost be related nodes, you know, related pages using an entity relation. There is um, a taxonomy field that shows the section. You could take all that out of the rich text field automatically using a scraper and you could clean up the rich text field and create actual logical CMS fields in the next migration of the website and actually have that mapped over. And I'll show that in a later example. Um, and finally, when you call a specific, a specific subset of pages, most times when you use like a screaming frog, you can limit it to a single domain, a multi-site, or, or something of that nature. But you could also code a crawler. Um, most government websites, and most modern websites, follow the same. You have a header, you have search in the corner, you have the menu, you have the content. But you could take that menu at the top, that URL list, you could use that to generate the list of URLs that are crawled. Then you can go and all those interior pages usually have the menu on the side, so you can write a script that goes through and takes all those side menus so you can get high level navigation without digging in and getting the deep links. So really you can edit this to your heart's content if you just want the basic pages or if you want to go deep and get like all you know 15,000 pages on the site. Or you can just limit it to the 1,500 that are probably the most important or the 150 that are the most important. And finally, you can limit a crawl to a list of URLs provided via a text or a CSV file, so they'd be delimited by a line break. So you could have screaming frog crawl. You could just like, I'm not gonna code a crawler myself, I'm just gonna use screaming frog to provide a list of URLs, and then I can plug them into a script that we're coding. So, so you can use terminal, and I'm gonna start by using terminal, and eventually I'm gonna get and show the Drupal module, but, but for right now, you can use terminal to download and migrate a static website in its entirety. So um, most any um, Linux or OS X computer comes with the wget and the curl command. You can also get it on Windows uh, using, I think, there's admin power tools or, or SIGWIN. Um, and you, that can get all the pages that flat, as flat HTML files. So essentially it spiders the page. You can go through and change the extension to HTML. You can get all the CSS, all the JavaScript, all the images. Um, the only caveat is, is it would be all of the, compi all of the compressed CSS, so all the, you know, Gulpified files, so to speak, and there would be none of the server code. So all the server side pages would be rendered as if they are to the client side user. So, as an example, this command would download DrupalGovCon.org to my computer. I ran it over the weekend. It ran it locally about 20 minutes. So the different flags in wget is HTML. The, the mirror is essentially what it means. I'm mirroring the site. HTML extension. I'm adding .html to the pages, and that's basically so I can, in, in a moment here, show you the site actually running on my browser without even running a local web server. I'm literally, I opened up the browser, I opened up the file in my, in my file manager, I double click the HTML file, and it opened up in my web browser and worked. Convert the links to have that HTML. I exclude the node taxonomy and user directories because it would go slash node slash one slash node slash two, it would just keep going and it takes a long time. The same with taxonomy and users. So, like I said, I did this over the weekend, it worked in about 20 minutes and as you can see, this is running off of my, sorry, the wrong button. Um, this is running directly off my computer. It looks exactly the same as the production site. One limitation, the contact page. If you click it, you will see that I get to the Cloudflare warning. Well, Cloudflare knew I was using wget when I called the site. Um, so you can see like, if I click there, you can see the IP address of my home computer. So you can go through here, but all the images work. Everything's been changed um, on this to, to a, a relative URL that runs directly right off of my computer. If I go into PHP Storm, you can see all the different folders in here. Even so far as seeing, like, you know, the theme, I can see that they're using the 2019 theme and the, the header image, all that fun stuff. Okay, so going to the next step, generating a CSV import file. So now that you've downloaded it, how would I say, hypothetically, I want to use my great API to download this into, into, into Drupal? Well, a quick PHP script I wrote takes this, takes this, it's update csv.php. So if I just run um, this, and I'll run it, you'll see it's going through all the different HTML files and it, it doesn't look like it did anything. Well, it created a CSV file 
Give me, I'm multitasking here. Uh, so you can see the CSV file here, the URL, the page title, and then this page content is everything that's in, and I'm just using Drupal GovCon as an example since it's not a client site, and it's kind of just, I, I, I don't have, an, I don't think there's any qualms of me doing it, but you can see the MQ main class, this div, this is the main client, so I configured it to grab any, and this this uses the simple um, the simple HTML DOM library. I just grab everything with the MQ main. I grab the first element of the MQ main. It looks very similar to a jQuery selector, except it's using PHP. I grab the content inner text, the title. I do the same thing. I grab the first title. I grab the inner text. I also take out uh, the site name, and then I just create a simple CSV. So that's just a quick and quick and dirty export. Um, I have used it in the past, and it works great. I'm going to go back to some limitations to this. So, so limitations. It's time consumer, time consuming, and developer dependent. So it's a great edge case, but it's really not useful beyond just like the one off. Like a client needs to know like the pages. You need to rerun the entire import to catch changes every time you know you want to fresh copy the website. You still need to migrate the content manually into a Drupal instance, and it's difficult to generate entity-based relationships. So you're really only getting like maybe a couple fields, maybe a date field if you're lucky, maybe some sort of taxonomy field if you're lucky. And you're also dealing with relative image links and media migration considerations, it's it's really not useful. Um, so it's more of like a skunk works or like, you know, like a fun little project, but it's not really useful. So it'd be more practical if the content could be imported directly from the source website into Drupal and the content cleanup tasks could be automated. So, creating a custom module to handle a migration using a content scraper. So, um, for the past six months or so, um, and, it's, and it's not completed yet, I've been working on a Drupal module um, that essentially is a crawler that enables you to dire directly in, in, ingest from another website into Drupal, and you can go and you can do migration tasks on the fly. So, um, a scripted so so a scripted migration process that involves web scraping handled within Drupal and it just utilizes core components um, PHP Symfony the batch API um, batch API and again um, I'd like to thank ChatGPT I did the same thing I said what is batch API um, it's a really cool tool uh, since Drupal six if you're doing a lot of um, large data processes. I know um, in, in past migrations, sometimes to get around limitations of when I'm doing a migration, I'll create a Josh command that kind of does like some cleanups, like if I'm generating a menu or if I'm um, setting statuses of, of certain nodes I'm importing. But the batch API, um, basically, you, instead of running 100 or 150 different tasks at once, it breaks them up into chunks of 10. Um, and I'll kind of demonstrate that. Um, and other considerations, so when you're using a scraper, in, ad in addition to just grabbing the content, I, I try to make sure I get a timestamp of when the um, page is crawled because if, if most migrations happen over months, sometimes you're going to have pages that are a couple weeks out of date compared to other ones that just got pulled in, you know, 24 hours ago. Um, the, the other consideration too is whether is this just a one-off? Like, is this actually going to be production, or is this like a, a staging Drupal instance that we're either a we're going to migrate from into the final Drupal um, website, or if it's just a, an internal Drupal Drupal system that we're using, like as content editors, to kind of determine, like, okay, which which content are we going to bring over, um, or what have you, or it's going to be direct one-to-one -one migration, um, etc. So, I was saying before about core functionality. Um, one one thing my module uses is the views bulk operations um, contributed module, which does use the batch API. So. Um, that is that is one piece of contrib that I, I, I my module depends on, uh, and the the most important part of this is basically as a as a backend developer I do not want to be having to handhold uh, scraping if it's done correctly doesn't it, it can be just as easy as using the migrate API but I don't necessarily want to be having to handhold or having to constantly be pulled off on questions I want to have this essentially be a self self sustained task that either a content manager can handle independently themselves or maybe even a PHP developer that knows enough to be dangerous can go in and tweak a couple lines and make it work if they need to. So this module does that. Um, one, one limitation, I would love to have the entire thing be um, configurable via the admin, and I originally kind of went that direction until I realized every single website structured differently. So 
I'll kind of show how the DOM works. It makes more sense to use um, a, 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 a PHP uh, coding style called traits, and I'll kind of show how a trait works, which basically breaks off the migration process into chunks, so a trait is a very simple function. So there's a trait to get the images, there's a trait to get the body content, and there's a trait to get the title that can be really easily modified to, since every site is a unique snowflake, it'll, it can be easily modified so it works on every site. So, um, for example purposes, I created a small Drupal module, like I said, and I'm gonna um, demo um, content import on the site. Um, so, I'll show some stuff, all right, cool. So, without further ado, I will show it. So, and bear in mind, this is a fresh, this is a just, I used a Drupal site install. This is a very basic Drupal. Um, the only um, two contrib things, uh, views bulk operations module is in the repository. I also installed and enabled the admin well admin theme just because the Claro um, core module doesn't really look good with views bulk operations. So just as an example, I, um, We'll go here and I'll enable the content crawler module. And again, both this and that real basic scraper, I'll provide a link to GitHub if anyone really wants to play with other basic modules um, or have any questions at the end. So um, I'll definitely don't mind sharing. So you'll see this requires the views bulk contrib module. It also requires um, two core modules, the media library and media, um, just because I'm going to demo how to bring images in. So I click continue. Oh great, it works. I have a big fear like being in front of a bunch of people that this stuff doesn't work. Um, I'm on my, like, my phone internet right now because the, the conference internet doesn't work with Lando, so I'm really happy that worked. Okay, so what the module does is, I'll kind of show, <laughs> I'll kind of show what it does first. So basically, there's, there's some, there's, uh, we'll go to Drupal 10, so this is a real basic Drupal 10 site. So it does a couple things. First off, it, when, it's, when it's enabled, it creates a content type called migrated content, which has a few fields. I'll show in the UI in a moment. It comes up with, I create a, there's a migrated HTML content type, which basically is a, it's, it's a input format in CK Editor that allows for HTML tags, like so script tag, anything can be put in there. And then finally, there's a view called migrate manager, which is a lot like the admin content page, except it has some views bulk operations in the top. So, going in here, So this, this thing where I can import a CSV, that is a complete lie, you can't do that yet. So just going to the uh, individual URL, I'll throw in the homepage of GovCon, I'll throw in the sponsors page, and I'll throw in the get involved, just three, so I'm not taking a year and a day on this, so you can get the general gist of it. Okay, so I migrated under here, so what all got put in here, so if I click on here, you'll see this is the slash get involved. You can see the source links. So this is the source. You can see it was imported at 2038, which is UTC time for 4.38 p.m. Eastern. If I click here and edit, you'll see uh, all this is in here. But you'll see that there's no page title yet, there's no body, and there's no imported images. So I'll go back here to the, I want to grab the page title, so I click here, I click action, I click process title, I click apply, I click execute, boom, there's page titles now. And that's from the title tag of the page. So I want to grab the images. Oh, actually, I'll start, with the, I'll start with the body first. So I click that, I click process body, I click apply, I click execute. So this happens very similarly to my other, um, to, my, to the other script I showed. It grabs that mq-content, and you can see, so for get involved, this is the exact, from the get involved page, um, you can see the sponsors page, and I picked the sponsors page because there's one of the few pages on here that had images. So they're working because I forgot to delete my site's default files folder from the last time I did this. So the images are working because of that, but, oh actually no, it's working because I'm on the actual live site. If I go here, perfect, yeah. So the images are broken on here, that's good. That's how they should be. So if I go here and I click, the next step is I want to migrate the images over process images, click apply, click execute. You'll see here that, that this is the batch API, that's that, and you've seen it before probably on other modules if you don't know what it is, and this um, will take less than 30 seconds. 
unless I just jinx myself, then it's gonna crash on me. Maybe it'll take 35 seconds. It is going through it. All right, cool. So it did, it did process the images. So now if I go through here and look at the sponsors page, it's showing most all the images. For some reason, the couple are broken, but for the most part, all the images come through. If I edit the page, you'll see that not only are the images and content, I actually pulled them, and there's this actual, this migrated image, this imported images, and you'll see that all the images show up. I take the alt tag and ask the title, they're actually also in, if I go to content uh, and then media, they're all in here as actual media entities. So a lot of this isn't necessarily earth shattering, but the, the way the module works is I've broken this all in, this has been all broken into like traits, essentially that, so, so the module itself is pretty basic, but these, these traits in particular, uh, so I'll start with the images since it's the most complicated. This is all the code that grabs images. So if we want the general gist of grabbing images to be the same, but let's say um, instead of having the alt tag be the alt, let's say we want to include another title of the parent that's that's the ahref. The, all a developer would have to do is go in and not even edit the views bulk operations files, which I'll show in a second. All the user would have to do is go in here and edit some of the code here, like for instance, we could get the parent of the image, the, the, the a tag, and grab the inner text, so the linked text next to the image, or whatever, or maybe there's another attribute on the image like um, title, like image dash title, like data image title or something depending on, you know, how the website was constructed. So again, and, and there's a bunch of documentation on trait, um, how to do a trait on Drupal org. Um, but anyway, page title, images body, um, likewise, uh, views bulk operations, I'll admit I'm a relative new convert to writing them and I think they're amazing, I don't know why I haven't done it sooner, but again, um, it's very easy, you can integrate these in almost any view. Um, so for content editors to do stuff on their own without having to bother me to do stuff, um, that's, that's a plus. Um, and again, the service, the scraper itself is super simple. This is really, this is all the code. Um, this, just, this, this particular module just uses the file get contents um, function in PHP to grab the URL and the filter markup um, just takes out the doc, the, just a couple of basic tags that aren't necessary. You could edit this as well if you wanted to filter more stuff out of it. So um, again, this is a real basic scraper, but this the cool part about it again is it, it's the beginning of if, if you wanted to grab, grab a website kind of like using the publicly accessible and it's just when you log into the Drupal, the Drupal instance and you see all the attached entities and it's a mess, it's just another um, alternate way of doing things. So. Um, go back here. So I, I did want to talk, so AI kind of changes things with this and so, so as I've been working, I kind of started on this just before AI became a thing and I know a, a lot of content, it, it's changing the way content editors look at like migrations because um, you can use chat prompts to kind of change like instead of taking co content from a site you can go in and like you could you could say hey this content has been touched in four years you could probably write a prompt and say like hey this is local, this is about city XYZ. Can you take this content and update it? What's happened in the last four years? Um, all those all those open AI um, API calls could be integrated as part of the scraper. So the scraper could do this, you could do the scraping and then um, in those fuse bulk operations as part of the pulling of the body content, you could, you could select an option like, hey, while you're pulling this body content, I'd like to also go through and change the tone of it to like be, include more information from the last five years. So I don't necessarily think web scraping will be replaced entirely, although probably within 10 years it could be, but I, I could definitely see AI is kind of augmenting things, and that's my little, I guess, necessary slide on AI since everyone's talking about it today. 
Um, and with that, that is it. Um, I, I hope this was useful and um, good. And I'm getting a little bit, I'm, I'm only, I'm done at 4.45 on the last session of the day, so. Um, but yeah, I have some scraper examples on my GitHub. I'll leave them up for a bit. And then um, my Drupal org profile on LinkedIn. Any questions? Yes, Jackie. How small a project have you applied this technique to and how big? So, um, it depends. I have done, I have, I, at, at bef, bef, in, in, in the past, I've done websites that have had over 10,000 files, but like a, a lot of times, um, I've worked on municipal websites that have had maybe 900 to 1,000 pages. So it, it just, it really depends. It would probably be better for a media, if, if you're talking like the tens of thousands of pages, it's probably better to try to use my great API if you could. This would be good for like a medium sized website, not like a very large one. And probably if it's a website that big, there's probably gonna be other considerations. But it can be used more as a support tool. I was trying to see, like, this doesn't necessarily have to replace Migrate API, it's, it can be a supplement to it. Um, especially if everyone it's, I agree. It's like CMS agnostic, like you can use it. Correct, correct. It can be CMS agnostic. Um, so you can run it on a- um, WordPress too. WordPress, you could do a, a, a Umbraco site, uh, any sort of .net, you could, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's platform agnostic, it's not Drupal. And, and again, I just chose DrupalGovCon.org since we're at the conference. It was kind of hard for me to pick a random website that wouldn't be like weird, like we pick a random website to migrate, but it would work with, it would work with any other website, yes. Any other questions? Yeah, yes. Did you say you were doing any kind of filtering, like inline CSS and jump markup? And if so, what library are you using to get through the DOM? Depends on what library. So. I'm actually for the, um, excuse, but I believe for the traits I'm using. There's actually, I'm, there's actually the DOM crawler. It's, it's built into Symphony. Um, you're putting me a bit on the spot. I haven't actually. I, I should have. Um, and and actually, if, if somebody emails me like a week from now, I can probably show how to move uh, junk, um, junk data. I have done it in the past. I don't have a readily available code example, but I, I know I know like I was saying I. In, in, in this particular module, I'm using the DOM, the this 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 crawler, um, which I use this specifically because I could uh, select classes. Um, I know the DOM document really only lets you use IDs or tag names; doesn't let you easily use a class name. Um, okay. Thank you very much for your time, everyone.